welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I do another easy design, a floral design of course, painted on this green gloss bottle. I will be using two Imagic paint brushes. They're so full of paint. Now it's hard for me to see what size is on. 10 and an 8. And a, a Deerfoot stippler. This is number 4. All the paints I use are folk art paints. There's a mixture of enamels and multi-surface. I will be using school bus yellow, purple lilac, forest moss, tea berry, eggplant, thicket, real brown, and wicker white. I am going to begin by double loading my brush. Now I don't have a whole lot of space where I'm doing my video as far as being able to show you exactly how I load my brushes, which I know everybody likes to see. But I'm going to be doing the eggplant, a little bit of the lavender lilac, I believe that's the color, or purple lilac, excuse me, and then just double loading my brush and I like to tip in the sides and then do the blending strokes. I can also throw in some white here and at some point even do some of the tea berry. And if you want to do more than two colors that's perfectly fine. Alright so let's go ahead and get started. I already cleaned off my bottle, washed it with soap and water and I'm ready to go. Uh, typically I, I, this bottle I'm not going to be selling, so I'll be washing it back off and doing a, another design on it for video purposes. But if you're doing it as a piece that you're going to keep and not just practice on, I would highly recommend that you go over it with rubbing alcohol before you create your design. Alright, so let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to do a couple little strokes. Now if you can see this, I'm doing it's like a teardrop stroke where you go around like that and then you just immediately come back up and go like that. So you basically have two of them connected to each other. Now I feel that your design really needs to be more opaque in order for it to be durable. Meaning that the more paint you put on a design the better that's going to be for the purpose of durability. These brushes that I use are long handle, which I'm getting more used to them, but I do have to admit that they are a little bit of a challenge at times because they get in the way. But for some reason I really like these brushes. So I'm not ready to give up on them by any means. Alright, so then I'm going to come back over here, repeat what I just did, giving me more, a few more blooms here. Now, I always do my designs on paper first, so I know once I start putting it on an actual project, a lot of times it's just not as spacious, so I have to keep that in mind to make adjustments to my design based on the space that my actual surface has allotted me. But I do like this new tea berry. I think it's very pretty. And that's a new paint color, which is the one I'm doing right now. And I think it's definitely a, a winner. Hopefully it's something they'll keep around for a while. Alright, and I'm going to do another one here. Again, these are just, I call it like a teardrop stroke. Very simple, and keep in mind, when you're viewing my videos, the whole point of my videos is to create designs that are very simple. I want you to feel comfortable being creative. Having a hobby or something to take your mind off of things is a great way to, 
you know, ease your mind, settle, settle yourself, give yourself some, you know, a chance to rest and relax. Okay, so now I'm coming up here to start my floral design. And again, it's going to be the same identical strokes as what I've already been creating with these little petals. However, there are going to be more of them. All right, and I like to turn my brush so that the colors are not always the same around the edges. I'm meeting in the center. I'm going to go back over here and clean that up a little bit. Now you can do these as four petals, five petals, six petals, whatever you can fit in. That's up to you. And you can vary them from you know, top to bottom with different colors. And that's what I like to do is like again just give your design some interest by varying the colors. Don't even have to vary vary the style of flower when you do this because the different shades give it some interest. You know, when you're combining those. Now I'm going to come up here with the tea berry and start doing some pulls with that. Starting with the top being the tea berry on the outer side. And then just coming like this over. Can I overlap? Absolutely. Not a problem. If you feel like your design though is not opaque enough, feel free to go back over it again. You can give it some dry time or you can Hit it with a heat gun or hair dryer, whichever you want to do is perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and do another open one down here. And I thought this was just a pretty, just a very simple, pretty little flower to paint on a bottle. You can even dip these into. I have a little bit of the eggplant in this as well. Pulling it up like that. Now, let's see here what I have going on here because I like to have odd numbers. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That would be perfect. Alright, so I'm going to go up here. I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to switch over here to the eggplant. Little bit of eggplant, and here goes my brush hitting the glass. And I'm going to move the plate back. And if you've noticed, I'm not very, you know, just kind of a little bit freer with how to load the brush. And you'll see some people that are just very staunch as far as how they're doing it. Once you paint for a while, you kind of get your own feeling for how to load, how to paint, how to structure it, and that, that's up to you. Okay, and I can even come back over this way and add in. Keep in mind, too, that I'm a lefty, meaning that I will go a different direction than you might go. So if I go from... I tend to go right to left when I'm creating. If you're right-handed, you might feel more comfortable creating from left to right. It's very, you know, it, there's no set rule to that. It's up to you. Now, when I get into doing my leaves, I'm going to do the thicket, the real brown, the forest moss, a little bit of the school bus yellow, and blend these together. 
blending stroke, hit, 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 blending stroke. Can even throw in a little bit of white if I want. And I'm about ready to start hitting the hitting the glass. So I'm going to come on here, kind of throw in my my vine or my stem, I should say. I don't know why I always want to call it a vine. And then I'm just going to have it like it's coming down this way. So basically I'm working with four colors in my brush. And I'm just on the side here. So I'm just doing my brush, hit, touching and pulling. Touching and pulling and coming down. And I'm going to do the same over here. Touch, pull, and hit my stem. And then do the same over here. Pulling it down into the flower below. Now these are just initial, initial um, leaves or stems, that type of thing, just to get, get going here with it. You can go back in and clean them up. Go back in and add more color, more paint. I'm just doing this just to get started with it. If that makes sense. And I'll come down here and do the same thing. Pull, I'm going to pull it in here. Do the same thing over here. Pull it up to that one. And these are just little buds, little buds. Alright, so that one's kind of hanging down there, and then if I want to come back in here, may put some more color. Now when you're doing on glass, it definitely is different, different behavior, different techniques, as opposed to working on paper or wood, those type of surfaces. You just might have to keep working with it till you get the result you're looking for and the reason I say that is that you know this is going to look different than what I did on paper and sometimes especially with the color of your bottles uh, if your paint starts to come up at all when you're you know the more you work it you'll find that too and then you might have to add some more color into it to get it to show up. And that's kind of what I'm doing here right now. It's just kind of playing with it a little bit and making sure it has good coverage. And then I haven't pulled up too much of the paint in doing this process. Or if I have too many colors going on, I can use those as a base and then come back in here and just go over it. Clean it up. All right, hope that makes sense. Now when you're working on glass, it's very important that you, again, get the, get the good coverage going, give your product at least a good hour to dry before you bake it. That's just a a, a general guideline, not to say that it's not going to be okay if you have to bake it sooner, because trust me, when I was doing a lot of glass painting, I mean like thousands of pieces a month, glass painting, I sometimes had to do the baking a lot quicker. But just a general rule is to give it some time to dry a little bit. Just to, it's not going to be completely cured, of course. If you air dry it, but this paint does allow you to cure it by air drying for 21 days, which is nice because not all of the glass paint will allow you to do that. Some of it has to be baked, or it won't it won't dry, it won't cure. Now, when I say cure, that means for it to be completely considered. You know, dry and it doesn't mean though that you can't 
use it or um, yeah, like if it's a drinking glass or whatnot, I just wouldn't put it in the dishwasher. And I really kind of recommend that you don't put the glass in the dishwasher, that you hand wash it if possible. The paint is made to go in the dishwasher, and it is dishwasher safe. So I'm not saying that because it's not, it's just that you really should handle it like fine china if you want it to have you know, lasting, nice appearance type thing. You really should allow it the time to cure, to be baked, and then once you do that, just hand wash it so that it remains looking nice. Definitely when you're uh, putting it, if you do decide to put yours in the dishwasher, make sure you always put it on the top rack. If you have a dishwasher that you would consider more of a commercial, meaning that it's higher heat than a typical residential dishwasher, I would not put it in there. I just, I just wouldn't risk it. And if you put it in the bottom rack, I can almost guarantee when you pull it out, a lot of the paint will be missing because it's just too it's too hot down there. Now on this design I'm just doing some very simple easy one stroke uh, type of leaves on here. You can do some poles like this. I don't know why I call it. I'm, there, I'm sure there's a better name for them than that. But that's for how I reference them brush this off. Extra paint. I hate when my brush gets too full. Alright, so I'm going to do like a little stem coming up. Let's see where else we can fit one in here because this is kind of kind of uh, crowded. I could probably pull a little one down this way, pull it over to the side. This bottle I wouldn't do, I personally wouldn't do it all the way around if I were to paint it. Um, I would just do the basic you know, front of it, front maybe a little bit of the sides. And that's just because it's probably a bottle that I would just have, I thought it's not a good leaf, that I would just have sitting on a shelf you know, with the front showing. And that's it. Now this one I'm just trying to do just some quick little leaves that come out from the little vines or little stem, whatever you want to call it. And then I'll come back in with a little bit of a darker stem to attach. Let's do a quick little pull there. Again, these don't have to be perfect. You can rotate the colors if you want it to be something else. I kind of like to try to have different colored stems, different colored leaves, not all of them being the same. I think that gives your design a little bit more interest if you do vary that. But they can all be the same if that's what you want. I just like to give people the option of creative uh, freedom, per se. I'll just go like this. It's very, again, and it's something if you feel like it's not full enough, have full enough of paint is what I mean, that the coverage isn't as, as good as you want, feel free to go back over it. You just have to be careful, though, when you do go back over it, just so that you don't pull the paint up. Be, meaning because it'll it'll sometimes it'll lift up once you've already painted something the paint will come up or if you're finding yourself working it too much just going over it and over it and over it you're going to have the same effect 
Yeah, the paint will kind of start looking like it's crackled. But it's not actually crackled, it's coming up is what's happening. I'll just pull them through here, just very easy. Very simple. And I know I keep saying that, but I just, I really do want you to give it a try. And let me know if you do. I'd love to, to hear from you if you do. Okay, so on this, you can also do something where you come out from any of these that you do, you can come out from them, um, maybe and just do some little, just very, very simple, almost like they're little branches or vines. You could even do this in brown if you wanted, just to have some kind of a, where you're just simply going, you know, they don't have to have any kind of uh, wiggliness to them, you know, that's up to you. Or you can turn your brush around and just do, you know, lighter version. Depending on which way your brush is going as to what color will lead. So you can do that or you can come out like that and lead with the darker color. And you can come out or you can do maybe even a brown just to make it more like a branch. You know, that's fine too. Another thing you can do, and you can do it in different size brushes too. Right now, I'm just doing it in the colors that I already have on my brush. Uh, and I'm just doing some basic pulls here. Except on my, on my paper I had more room, so this made a, made a lot more sense what I'm doing right now. But I'm just basically pulling towards the stem as opposed to away from it. You get different looks based on the direction of how you're using the brush. If you're pulling it towards the stem, pulling it away from the stem, that can create two entirely different looks you know, of your leaves. And I'm just coming back over it so you can see it a little bit. I right, said so you can keep working on it to get it to stand out more, get more detail to it, however you want to do it. All right, so right now what I'm going to do is do my little brush here to get the centers filled in. I am using a deer foot stippler, loading the front with the white. I'm going to do the school bus shell on the back, tap it on my my plate, my palette, whatever you're using for your palette, and then I'm going to come in here and just stamp it in. I'm going to reload it and continue on. And come back over here, reload it again, stamp it off. Got a little bit of green in there this time. A little bit of that color from the leaves, which is fine because that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. Well, it's from the flower petals, I should say, not the leaves. And I come in here, do the same thing. You can make your centers going in different directions if you want. Meaning they don't have to all be like they're heading, the flowers are heading in the same, same direction. I don't know if that makes sense to you or not. I hope it does. If you have any questions, though, please leave those down below. I'd love to hear from you. Questions, comments, any requests. I know somebody had wanted me to do some painting on fabric. I am going to be working on that. haven't created a tutorial yet for that, but I will be. I haven't forgotten you. All right, so you can, what I like to do is come back in here put the heel of this brush into the tea berry and I'm going to come in here and go like that just kind of hit these. I can do more around the edges if I wanted. This I'm just trying to get some of this color in. I can keep working it. Like I said your centers you can play with probably quite a bit to actually try to get 
get the get them exactly the way you want them. I'm going to come in here intentionally add in some of the yellow, a little thicker. I'm just kind of tapping it. And then I'm going to do the front again with some white. Come in here, add some more white over the top. And then leave them leave them like that. They don't have to be perfect. I don't want them to be perfect. I want them just how I have them. All right, there you go. Very simple. You could, of course, add some dots to the center, add some dots to the center of the little, uh, little, um, what am I trying to say, little blooms, but you don't have to. You just leave it like this. I would give it some drying time, an hour or so, then hit it into the oven. Make sure you turn the oven on after you put your glass in. Do not preheat until you've actually placed the glass into the cold oven. Then you turn it on, preheat, add your preheat time to the bake time. Bake time on this pan is 30 minutes at 350 degrees. Once I do that, I let it bake for me about 50 minutes because my preheat time is about 20 minutes. So once it's done, turn it off. Let it cool completely and then remove your glass. The main thing you have to keep in mind is that glass has the opportunity to break if you have quick temperature change. So you don't want to put it into a hot oven and you don't want to quickly remove it into the cold air or you risk it breaking. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you give me a big thumbs up new to my channel, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and before you leave, please share this video on your social network with all your family and friends. Very easy, just hit that share button that you'll see underneath the video. It'll give you the options of where you want to send it, and that's all you have to do. Pretty easy. All right, thanks again for taking your time to stop by. I do appreciate you. Stay safe and healthy, and until the next time, you have a good one. Bye.